NRC event notification report for January 18, 2013, and reported uranium hexafluoride release at the Paducah Gaseous Diffusion Plant. Background The Paducah Gaseous Diffusion Plant is located in Kentucky. It produces enriched uranium for nuclear power plants. The plant is now operated by United States Enrichment Corporation, a subsidiary of USAC Incorporated. It is the only operating uranium enrichment facility in the United States. The plant was opened in 1952 as a government-owned contractor-operated facility producing enriched uranium to fuel military reactors and for use in nuclear weapons. The mode of enrichment was the gaseous diffusion of uranium hexafluoride to separate the lighter fissile isotope uranium-235 from the heavier non-fissile isotope uranium-238. Planned operations have contaminated the site with uranium, trichloroethylene, PCBs, technetium-99 which is a radioactive fission product which in 1988 was found even in Drinking water wells in McCracken County, Kentucky. The Paducah Gaseous Diffusion Plant is a true environmental disaster and an American nuclear tragedy. An American nuclear tragedy is a wonderful documentary that shows the effects of this man-made monstrosity on people and the environment. There are no nuclear plants in Kentucky except for this hideous death plant that keeps contaminating the state of Kentucky. NRC event notification report for January 18, 2013, and reported uranium hexafluoride release at the Paducah Gaseous Diffusion Plant. This report is titled as a late report as the radioactive gas releases occurred on December 22, 23, and 29, 2012 but were conveniently not reported until January 17, 2013 and posted on the NRC website on January 18, 2013. During December 2012, the C-360 Toll Transfer and Sample Building experienced three incidents where the laboratory process gas leak detection system was actuated. Subsequent samples of personnel in the area confirmed that so-called minor exposures did occur. The exposures confirm that the process gas leak detection actuations were due to actual uranium hexafluoride releases. Investigation and testing found that the first two incidents were caused by a pinhole leak in instrument tubing. The third incident was caused by leakage around the stem of an instrument valve. These three events were evaluated for reportability at the time they occurred, but it was somehow determined they did not meet reporting criteria. However, after further evaluation and discussion with NRC staff the United States Enrichment Corporation is reporting the incidents. Kudos to the NRC staff for not letting the United States Enrichment Corporation get away with it. Better later than never. BioSA results showed a detectable exposure with confirmation of a leak. Helium leak detection was utilized to find the small pinhole leak that caused first two incidents. The third incident was due to leakage around a valve stem that was discovered by soap testing the valve and evidence of some visible oxides on the valve stem. and the United States Enrichment Corporation and the NRC claim that these types of releases are incidental and do not have the potential for impact on the health and safety of personnel or the public. These incidents are being reported as a 24-hour event and as an unplanned actuation of a Q safety system, an automatic or manual actuation of a Q safety system that results from an event or condition that has the potential for significant impact on the health or safety of personnel. Events having the potential for significant impact are those events where actual plant conditions existed that the system was designed to protect against. The nuclear power plant does not stand alone. It is underlaid by a massive industrial infrastructure. 
You have to mine millions of tons of uranium, fossil fuel. You just watch those trucks. They're as big as this, as this church, a truck. And then you've got to mill it, crush it into little fine particles, that more fossil fuel. And then the uranium is enriched in America and at Paducah. They use two 1,500 megawatt coal fire plants to enrich the uranium. Oh, but it doesn't produce any CO2, right? Well, people should be sued. I mean, there must be a law that people can't lie. This is so important, and it's a medical problem. And we sit back, you know, waiting in our, waiting, in our consulting rooms for the patients to present with their lumps and their indigestion or their hematemesis or their hemoptysis or the pneumothorax, and it's too late. And we don't get out and say, OK, I want to educate you about medicine. I mean, there are lots of things we could do, like why you shouldn't hand your antibiotics over the fence to Mrs. Brown, because a year ago you had the same symptoms as Mrs. Brown, and why don't you have the rest of my antibiotics? I mean, people, people don't know anything about viruses and bacteria, and that's because we haven't taught them. But we must teach them about this too. The other thing is that, the, that at the enrichment plant of Paducah, Kentucky, the uranium is converted to a gas called uranium hexafluoride, which is very corrosive and very hot. And there are hundreds of miles of pipes containing this gas that is filtered through a cascade of filters. On one side stays uranium-235, which is the one that is the fissionable one, and the other side Actually, it's the reverse. It says U238, which is non-fissionable, and this is 235. 235 is present in 0.7% in natural uranium and must be enriched to 3% for use in reactors, over 50%, and you've got bomb-grade material, and the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was a uranium bomb. But because there are hundreds of miles of these pipes that are very hot, beside them are other pipes containing CFC gas. Now, you know... Um, that the Montreal Protocol bans CFC gas because it destroys the ozone. And in Australia, one in nine people now get malignant melanoma because the sun is so intensely toxic. And, you know, old people are just absolutely covered in SCCs and BCCs. I mean, you sit in a dermatology clinic, it's unbelievable. That's from the sun. And we are very racist in Australia. The Aborigines have the highest infant mortality in the world, dreadful conditions, we stole their land, but we like to lie in the sun and turn brown um, in the summer um, and, and, you know, get a lot of melanin in our skins like the Aborigines. Anyway, so this CFC is, circulates through hundreds of miles of pipes and 93% of the CFC-114 gas, which is the commonest here, um, is released in America from the uranium enrichment plant and it's 10 to 20,000 times uh, more potent as a global warmer than CO2. Fancy that. How did I find that out? Oh, well, I called the EPA and I found this really nice woman called Nancy something and she sent me all the data. And there are many other actual global warming gases used in the production of uranium for nuclear power. So. I can't tell you the sense of indignation I have that people are lying about this, particularly the nuclear industry, saying they're the answer to global warming. And I would like all of you to take this into your hearts and souls too, and your bones, and get out there and teach your friends. And if they don't listen, hit them on the head. Okay. Um, so that's uranium.